Hello again, everyone, with my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. We are set to go. Gorgeous Saturday afternoon. We are set up here at the Minster Invitational, just about ready to go with our first event of the day, but you couldn't ask for much better running weather than what we've got today, partner. Yeah, where else would you rather be than right here? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful day here in Minster. 74 degrees, light wind, ideal conditions to run in. First event of the day will be the finals for our girls' 100 hurdles. We take a look at the lane assignments for this one. We see Sophia Hardwick of West Liberty Salem in lane one, Sophia Whirling of Minster in lane two, Capri Bixler of South Adams in lane three, Grace Moeller of Marion Local in lane four, Josephine Pothaus of Versailles in lane five, Ariel Heitkamp, Fort Loramie in lane six, Lexi Niemeyer of Minster in lane seven, and Grace Agoki of Spencerville will be in lane eight. Yeah, it's Moeller with the best time from Marion Local, 15.91. She is your favorite. Look for Bixler and Putthouse to challenge. And uh, Hike Camp in lane six could be a challenger as well. Electric Gun will get things underway. Look at the smoothness coming over top and snapping it through, Randy. And it looks like our first event winner in uh, just over 16 seconds. We think... Uh, the people here at Minster having the uh, board set up. And Grace Moeller so efficient with her stride, snapping that back leg over top. Great run for Grace Moeller. Looks like 15-8-2 for Grace Moeller. That'll be the winning time for our girls' 100 hurdles. And the lane assignments for this one, we see Titus Lehman of South Adams in lane one. Connor Hyman of South Adams in lane two. Owen Beachler Bradford will be in lane three. Colton Reese of Versailles in lane four. Logan Phillips of West Liberty Salem in lane five. Jackson Steeter of West Liberty Salem in lane six. Bo Dwanger of Minster in lane seven. And Landon Arling Marion Local will be in lane eight. Right, Colton Reese from Versailles. Boy, what a difference in time. 14 at 9 1, almost a full second ahead of everybody. He is your favorite in lane four, the senior. He looks to get another win here today. Yeah, got here just in time to watch the uh, semifinals. The partner, he kind of cruised his way through that 14 9 1. You heard the gun. We are underway with our boys' 110 hurdles. And just like his heat. So efficient for Colton Reese. Wastes no time and effort as he gets the easy win. Well, a hurdle crew doing an amazing job here, Minster. We've got the uh, hurdles removed. That'll get us uh, time for our dash event. And it looks like due up first here will be the girls 100 as we take a look at the Lane assignments for our girls 100. We see Chloe Griffith of West Liberty Salem be in lane one. Adriana McKean of South Adams in lane two. Claire Hoback of Spencerville in lane three. Kylie Williams of Minster in lane four. Addison Dowler of Crestview in lane five. Katie McFarland of uh, Layman Catholic in lane six. Izzy Meyer of Fort Loramie will be in lane seven. Anna Larger of Minster will be in lane eight. And Kylie Williams, your best time coming in, 12.65. Looks to be challenged by Addison Dollar of Crestview, 12.94. And uh, boy, this, this Invitational is run very efficiently. It was like a well-oiled machine getting those hurdles off the track. Just in time for our girls 100. This is going to be a close one to see that lane four. Although McKean of lane two from South Adams making the charge late. Yeah, McKean made it close, but I do believe it was Williams of Minster that got the victory. Everybody's favorite race. You just point and run as fast as you can. Great job by the ladies competing in this one. We'll give you some lane assignments for this one. Braxton McMichael of Spencerville will be in lane one. Jack Bayhan of West Liberty Salem in lane two. Harrison Wendell of St. Henry in lane three. Nate Busher of Marion Local in lane four. Ryan Worley of St. Henry in lane five. Owen Rindler of Marion Local in lane six. Gabe McGill of West Liberty Salem in lane seven. John Keller Minster will be in lane eight. Now, folks, this might be a real competitive race. So many times are close from earlier in today. Keep an eye on Wendell, Bushler, and Worley 
Those are your three guys in the middle in lanes three, four, and five. Their times are so close. 11-3-9, 11-3-2, and 11-3-8. This is everybody's favorite race. So much fun. Think of the days you spent in recess racing your buddy. Well, it's here on the track right now. Looks like everyone is ready to go. Just waiting for the gun. Again, electric gun here. And we are underway. And what a great start by Wendell. This so went neck and neck all the way down to the finish line. Looks like Harrison Wendell might have pulled this one off from lane three. Waiting for it. There it is. Wendell, your winner with a time of 11.19 seconds. Wow, that's absolutely flying. Great job by Wendell to get the victory. So Wendell, your winner is the 100 dashes wrap up. We'll take a break here. More track on WOSN. Getting set once again here at the Minster Invitational. Again, we want to tell you that today's track meet is presented by Reese Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Next up will be the girls 4x200 meter relay. We'll take a look at the lane assignments for this one. No semifinals run in this one, so everything based off seed times. Houston will be in lane one, New Bremen in lane two, West Liberty will be in lane three, Fort Loramie in lane four, Minster lane five for sales in lane six, and Covington in lane seven. Near best time coming in with your seed times, Fort Laramie, a 1.50 overall. Should be a competitive race. Minster real close, 1-5-1. Keep a, an eye if it comes down to the last handoff. And Anna Larger, she is a dynamic anchor. Minster's close. They're going to have a chance to win. Of course, what a tradition here at Minster with track. I think I counted 14 state titles overall between the, the boys and girls. That's pretty good, huh? Tradition of excellence. It looks like starters getting everyone out of the infield backed up so they can uh, get this one uh, started. You take a look at the Fort Loramie, as Miles had mentioned, that uh, quick seed time, minute 50. Two freshmen, a sophomore, junior, making up the foursome. That's a time right there, Randy. They'll put them on the cusp of making it down to Columbus at the end of the year. It's an impressive foursome. Starter getting everyone just about ready to go here for our girls four by two. Getting a little help from the announcer to start. It's always interesting to watch this first lap. You see the field kind of fan out, and then they will come together. And coming up on some of the first exchanges, so important that you get that clean exchange that you waste any time at all. And top teams look like they're very efficient on the handoff. A good uh, first part of this girls 4x200 meter relay. Now we're going to have a good battle up front here. Coming up on the third exchange. Minster in the lead currently. That's Kylie Williams carrying the baton right now. No problem with the exchange. It looked like Williams might have, she got the uh, hand bandaged up a little bit, a little tape. A little toughness there, right? I guess. A little hand injury, not gonna stop you from running hard. And keep an eye on Fort Laramie though, making a move. Izzy Meyer. 
gets her team back in contention. One more handoff. You see everyone going through it right now. As we get to the final part of our girls' 4x200 meter relay. Yeah, it's going to be a great battle on the stretch here, Randy. Fort Laramie and Minster battling it out. This one's going to come all the way down to the wire. And just a little separation at the end is going to lead Minster, it looks like, to the win. See some final numbers come up there. Minster will go 149, I believe 30. Now yeah, two seconds below their seat time coming in. Great conditions lead to a great time. But the anchor run last three and four for Minster gets it done. Fantastic race. Time now for the boys. Four by 200 meter relay. It looks like we'll see Crestview set up in lane one. Minster will be in lane two. Versailles coming in lane three. Marion Local in lane four. St. Henry in lane five. Fort Loramie will be in lane six, Covington in lane seven, New Bremen in lane eight. Boy, these are going to be some fast times. We saw pretty impressive runs in that first heat, some of the slower times. Yeah, some of the seed times are a virtual locks as identical. Marion Local with a 133.86, just a little bit ahead of St. Henry with a 133.96. Yeah, get ready for some fun here, folks. This is going to be a real competitive race. Ready, ready, Mr. Starter. So it looks like they are getting the starter ready here. So I want to tell you quickly, we want to thank all of our underwriting sponsors for today, Reese Meyering and Company CPAs, Charles River, the Spencerville Athletic Boosters, St. Henry Bank, and Yulesman Automotive. On your mark, your mark. That's Owen Riddler that's going to lead it off for Marion Local, the senior, known for his fantastic starts. Going to need to get off to a great start because St. Henry with Ryan Worley, the junior, also a capable runner. Starter has everyone ready to go. And we are underway with our boys, a 4 by 200 meter relay. Good start by Minster in lane two. Andy Poppelman getting it off for Minster. See the first set of exchanges happening right now. See what happens as we head to the front stretch. St. Henry had a, such a clean exchange. Hanging out in third place right now. Marion Local in fourth. It's like Marion Local trying to change that a little bit as we get about halfway through. That's Tate Hess for Marion Local, and he got the baton and just took off, giving Marion Local the lead. Boy, that's a, how important that clean exchange is. Part of the reason why they have jumped out in front. One more exchange. We'll see what happens here. Looks like a little bit of trouble. Not quite sure who that was. One of the outside lanes. Might have been Covington in lane seven. It's Moeller for Marion Local and Wendell for St. Henry. Can St. Henry catch? This one's going to be close, making a run late. And it looks like St. Henry, thanks to Harrison Wendell, is going to get the win as we look for the times. There it is, St. Henry in 132.57 will just edge. Marion Local and our boys 4x2. And we'll take a break. We'll have more track coming up for you next here on WOSN. Just underway with our next event, the girls' 1600 meter run. It's a pretty impressive time for this one here, Mike. Yeah, a little shake and bake action for Minster. Top two times, Margaret Hemmelgarn in the junior with a 508.12. And then Mara Nykamp, the freshman with a 52.61. You think those young ladies run a great deal with each other? Of course they do. And uh, real important. And you see right now they're out in front. 
You always want to get out in front early because you want to get blocked out and get caught in the traffic behind. Great run so far by Minster early. This one, as Miles had mentioned, Margaret Hamilgar, just based on seed time setting in, about 12 seconds faster than the rest of the field. So, got to believe that she'll set the pace early here. Now Macy Kowicki, a senior from uh, Crestview, got a chance as well. Camille Borchers from uh, Laramie also. And you see there they are, the four ladies with the top times, running as a pack early. First lap of four in the books here. So that front four beginning to separate themselves a little bit. So we have a moment. We'll tell you about some of the field events that happened through today, today here at uh, Minster. But the boys' uh, discus, a winner going to Dustin Quinter of uh, St. Henry with a throw of 146.5. Was three feet better than Charlie Schmessler of uh, Minster at 143.2. In the uh, girls' shot put, Amber Wendell of Marion Local, 37-6, edging Emily Earl of Houston, went 36-10 and a half. High jump for the boys goes to uh, Will Russell from uh, Canterbury in Fort Wayne, goes 6-2. Ryan Holcher of uh, Fort Loramie second at six feet. And in the women's high jump, 5-3 mark the winner there, Kayla Lamb of uh, Minster, three inches better than Ava Randley of Marion Local. A high camp, and, uh, or I'm sorry, in High Camp and Hemelgarn of Minster, they're, they're extending that two-person lead out in front. A correction, that is actually Borchers in second place from Fort Laramie. She is sandwiched between the two Minster runners. Looks like we see Kowicki of Crestview dropping back a little bit. She's fallen out of that first group and is now going to be challenged for fourth place. It's so important that you have your plan in a four-lap race like this. You want to make sure you don't get too far out of distance where you can't execute that plan in the last two laps. But you got to give it credit to Hemelgarn really setting the pace. Still has that runner on her hip pocket there. Yeah, I believe that's a Borchers from uh, Fort Laramie hanging out. Still within striking distance, about three strides behind Helmogarn. His top two trying to pull away from the rest of the field. Currently sitting at 3-4-0. A pretty efficient time. Good conditions for him to run in today. Not too hot. Now they're going to be set here. Should be just one more lap to go. So we might be in a pretty entertaining final of our girls 1600. I don't know if Helmogarn will get to her 5.08. But right now, she's just worried about winning this. And this is a two-lady race, it looks like, from here on out, Randy. That Borcher's making her move. Smart to do it on the back stretch. Don't want to try and make your move on a curve. And it's virtually lock and lock, neck and neck right now. They've gone side by side, and now we see New runner up front, Camille Borchers of Fort Loramie. If I try to read the numbers sideways. Yeah, look at the impressive back stretch of Borchers. Did she extend too much energy, though? Will she have enough on this straight straightaway? I'm going to find out here, down to the final 100 meters. No, she looks like she's getting stronger, actually. Yeah, getting to pull away. And a good run. And a solid time as it looks like about 5.19-ish. 
520-37 is going to be the winning time. So uh, it'll be Borchards beating Emelgarn by about four seconds to win our girls' 1,600 meter race. Great strategy by Borchers. Hung out long enough, just drafted enough behind the Hemelgarn, and then put the gas to the floor, got the victory. Looking forward to what should be another interesting race time now for the boys, 1,600. Miles, there's some pretty good uh, runners in this event. Yeah, Randy, your top uh, five, six runners all within 10 seconds of each other. Uh, there are so many runners that are underneath five minutes. Your top 12 runners are underneath five minutes. This is going to be great. Your top time on seat time, Lanny Oakman from Spencerview, absolutely, uh, Spencerville, absolutely flying at 43634. Five seconds behind that is uh, Troy Stuckey from uh, Marion Local at 441. This is going to be a real fun race. So it looks like a uh, pretty solid group here beginning. Not really a big breakaway like there was in our uh, girls' race. See who that uh, front man is. Yeah, impressive pace early. 49 seconds, and they're already on the back stretch. This looks like Oakman leading the early group. Stunky of Marion Local right there is that top two, but we see. It's like some Minster, some Fort Loramie mixed in there as well. Yeah, Jake Grishop, uh, the third runner from Minster, came out of the time of 441.80. So your top three runners established early that they're out to the lead. First lap, now they're going to start to fan out a little bit as we run single file. It gives us an opportunity to go through some more of the... Uh, Field events from earlier today. Our boys, a long jump winner, Dan Bruns and Marion Local going 20 feet, seven inches, besting Jared Harden, Harding, excuse me, of Crestview. Harding the runner up at 1910.75. And we did have one running final from earlier today. It was the boys four by eight as a new Bremen's team of Zach Weideman, Sam Barold, Pierce Whitlatch, and Patrick Bernhold wins with a time of 824.46. Minster second at 826.35. Minster also takes the girls four by eight. Shaney Cedarleaf, Annie Hemelgarn, Margaret Hemelgarn, Taylor Roth winning a 9.46.03. Besting runner up Fort Loramie. By 13 seconds, Fort Loramie second, 959 flat. Now Oakman and Stucky still leading one and two. Oakman continues to stretch. You wonder if he's trying to wear everybody else out. But Stucky won't go away. Just a couple strides behind. Have another runner coming up. Adam Ballas from Fort Laramie now in third place. About one stride separates the top three runners. And they got fourth and fifth and sixth in there as well. So it is about a six runner single file breakaway. Yeah, just what we thought it would be. Top six times were so close with uh, Oakman having the best time, and he's led it so far. And he has not uh, given up that lead. He's also had someone right on his heels the entire time. That someone has been virtually the same runner in uh, Stuckey. Yeah, see a big move being made here. Yeah, a new leader finally as we head to the last lap. The gun for the last lap at about 335. I believe that's Adam Ballas who came all the way from fifth place at one time in this race. And I'd say he saved enough energy. Look at him extend that lead. And Stuckey making a move into second place for Marion Local. Getting to pull away now. Did he hit gas too early, though? We're going to find out. Nothing like hitting that X button, right? Yeah. Not having anything left. A little nitrous oxide into your Fast and Furious car. It's fun while you have it, but when you run out of gas, you run out of gas. We'll see if he manages here the final 200 or so meters. Yeah, take a look at Oakman recapturing second place. 
see if he's got anything left as we head down the stretch and our boys 1600 we're gonna have a good finish here second third and fourth what a race as we wait for the official times it will be ballast excuse me wins in a time of 442 43 that Grisop, how about him on the last lap coming out of nowhere to steal third place? What a fun race that was. Yeah, Ogman ends up second. It looks like 443.97 as we try to read off the video board in front of up. Grisop in third. So what a run and what a way to wrap up our boys' 1600 meter run. Ready to go now, one of the quicker events of the afternoon. It'll be our girls 4x100 relay. We said this one of the other uh, relay events earlier. If the uh, first heat is any indication with the quote-unquote slower teams, this one might be pretty interesting. Yeah, they weren't real slow, were they? They, they, were, they were speeding around it. The track, folks, don't get up and go to the, the refrigerator for this race. You'll miss it. Stay right here. This is going to be a fun one. Give you the uh, lane assignments quickly here. West Liberty will be in lane one. St. Henry in lane two. Minster lane three. Layman Catholic lane four. Fort Loramie in lane five. Marion Local in lane six. Versailles in lane seven. South Adams, Indiana in lane eight. Well, Layman Catholic, best time, 5-1.95, but not too far off is uh, Fort Laramie in lane five. 5-2.00. Marion Local in lane six. Keep an eye on them also. Very competitive time. This is going to be a great race. I think a lot of it's going to depend on this first start. You get off to a great start here. Put yourself out in front and then take care of your exchanges. You might win this thing. Looks like the officials trying to get everyone situated. We see the flags going up to indicate that they are ready. So he's now asked for the boys in the relay to kind of give themselves a little bit of room. It's Mara O'Leary, the junior from Lehman Catholic in lane four. She'll get it started for them. And is it uh, Suni Vosard for Fort Laramie? Going to get it started for them. On your mark, your mark. Evidently, it's Sunny. No, it is. Like, you can see the sun. Sunny Vosard, yeah. Heard mom yell, let's go Sunny, so I figured that out. Call you the best color man in the business for nothing. You know, reading is uh, vital to life, and I think I do a good job sometimes. Reading is also a city in Pennsylvania, so there's that as well. <laughs> good first exchange so far. And it looks like we're going to have ourselves a race. Caroline Westner for Lehman Catholic carrying it right now. Fort Laramie has been absolutely flawless on their exchanges. And that's why they have the lead right now. Another incredible exchange. See what's in store here. We got about five of them. Looks like it really make this a race. This one's going to come down to the wire. Well, partner, you're right. It came down to the wire. It was neck and neck. See who gets the win here. That one too close to call from our vantage point. Fort Loramie is going to get the win. How about one one hundredth of a second? 52-27, 52-28. Fort Loramie over Versailles. And Versailles ran a great race. Almost got the win. Came from three behind. Stride for stride. Almost got it at the end. What a great race.
Time now for the boys, a four by 100 meter relay. This one looks like it's gonna be very competitive race as well as we take a look at our lane assignments. We'll see Minster in lane one, Versailles in lane two, West Liberty in lane three, St. Henry in lane four, Marion Local will be in lane five, Fort Loramie in lane six, New Bremen in lane seven, Covington will be in lane eight. Top two teams, uh, St. Henry in lane four and Marion Local in lane five, four, four, six, nine, four, four, nine, nine. All right, Rylan Worley, young man we saw early. He's going to start off for St. Henry, a great runner. Uh, also, Kate, take a look at Marion Local. Kyle Adi, uh, he'll begin at second. Tate Hess, he'll be carrying at third. These teams are stacked with unbelievable runners. And now just underway here in our boys, four by one. Yeah, great start for Marion Local. Braden Pavlik. Uh, Look at Marion Local taking off right there, going to get the lead. And it's Kyle Adi that got him his team to lead, but being challenged by St. Henry now. A good handoff there. That was about a three, four-man race. Field now thinning out a little bit as St. Henry taking control. This one's going to come down to the wire. It looks like St. Henry, Marion Local. Harrison Wendell again. Mr. Wendell getting it done. And part of the reason why St. Henry is going to win our boys 4 by 100 relay. 44.4. It's about half a second quicker than Marion Local, who will finish in seconds. So we'll take a break. More track coming up for you next here on WOSN. Looks like we are set for our girls 400. Been advised by my broadcast partner to call it a run and not a dash. <laughs> it always cracks me up when we want you to dash all the way around the track. It is a, a very difficult task. Take a look at uh, some of the lane assignments for this one. We see uh, Adrian McKean of South Adams in lane one. Ava Stammen of Minster in lane two. Lexi Monin of Rushi in lane three. Alexis Magoto of Versailles in lane four. Cameo Cedarleaf of Minster in lane five. Katie Linden of Versailles in lane six. Mallory Bostic of West Liberty in lane seven. And Ella Berger of Fort Loramie in lane eight. Uh, Domo Arigato, Mrs. Magato. She is your best time at 5.9.51. Uh, Cedarleaf from Minster, 5.9.91. Those two are head and shoulders above the, the rest of the field in their seed times. Looks like everyone's got their blocks ready to go. Gone underway here in our girls' 400. And wasting no time on the back turn, catapulting to themselves to the front. It looks like Magato taking the lead. Now look at the pace by Magato. Moved herself right to the front. Good work with her stride on the back turn. Slingshots her all herself way out to the front. Set for the final 100 meters now. Looks like she might have a little bit of competition. Yeah, Cedarleaf trying to catch. Might run out of real estate though. Looks like she will and a good run in her girls 400. Now it looks like Magato is going to get the victory with a one minute and point two three to get the win. Now Cedarleaf will be the runner up at one minute sixty eight one hundred one ninety three to Litna Versailles for third as we now 
turn our attention to the boys 400. Ready to go now with our boys 400. We take a look at the lane assignments in this one. We'll see Matthew Niekamp of uh, Minster in lane one. Tyler Barga of Versailles will be in lane two. Michael Bell of Rushi in lane three. Frank Rethman of Fort Loramie will be in lane four. Wesley Schoen of Marion Local in lane five. Jared Harding of Crestview in lane six. Micah Smith of West Liberty in lane seven. Owen Moeller of Marion Local will be in lane eight. That's Rethman in lane four with your best time coming in a five, a two flat. Uh, looks to be challenged by Schoen from Marion Local, the junior with a 5 2, two five. Harding uh, from uh, Convey Crestview, Crestview at 5 3 four, two. has an outside shot of winning this one as well. I believe the starter is going to get a little bit of help from our announcer. Had an issue during one of the earlier heats with their scoring system. They have to go straight now. Yeah, starter's pistol a little bit different here today with the electronic Starter's pistol. Set, set. Ah. We understand the uh, gun is uh, tied into the, the uh, timing system. So the firing of the electric gun is actually what starts the timer. I believe the uh, system Looks like uh, a giant cooler on the back of a cart. It's not. It's a battery pack. The battery had died, causing some problems. Now underway here with our boys 400. And boy, throw a blanket over that top group right now. Yeah, without a doubt. Showing got off to a great start, but Rathman has really moved into contention. One and two right now. Rathman looks like he's got the momentum on this straightaway. Set up for what should be a good finish here. Oh, it's going to be a, a beautiful finish. Might be photo, photo. Close all the way down to the end. Let's see the timing here in just a minute. It looks like... Yeah, I think Ruthman got it by maybe a nose. Ruthman in 52 flat. It looks like just over showing. Varg is going to end up third. I came in with a 52 flat. What did he run? 52 flat. He is Mr. Consistency. That is our boys 400. We're going to take a break here. We'll have more track when we return on WOSF. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday with you here from Minster. I want to tell you that today's track meet is presented by Reese Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. We move on to the girls' 300 hurdles. Take a look at the lane assignments here. We see Mara O'Leary of the Lehman Catholic in lane one. Ariel Heitkamp, Fort Loramie will be in lane two. Carly Busher, St. Henry in lane three. Grace Muller of uh, Marion Local in lane four. Sophia Hardwick of West Liberty in lane five. Miriam Garrett of Versailles in lane six. Claire Longshore of West Liberty in lane seven. Josephine Pottest of Versailles in lane eight. This race is going to be so close. You take a look at the prelim times. Four, nine, two, seven. Authored by Moeller and Hardwick in lanes four and five from Marion Local and West Liberty. Underway, saw the uh, first group of hurdles uh, cleared. Now the second one. Yeah, so important that you get your stride down in this race. Usually the winner is the one that is able to navigate the hurdles but yet continue to keep their stride. You'll get a better look here as they make the turn on who's going to win this race. Yeah, head down to the last 100 meters. And now just one more set of hurdles. And yeah, it's Hardwick out front. One more set to go, and she's going to get a victory. Get challenged late. And we'll wait for the time to come across, but it does look like a solid win. And I think it's Busher from St. Henry that challenged late, but just ran out a little bit of real, real estate. A good win for Hardwick. You know, Hardwick with a win, 48.85, it looks like. 49.04 for Busher. Ends up as the runner-up. Looks like Heidkamp third at 49.58. Time now for our boys' 300 uh, hurdles. 
Take a look at the lane assignments. Connor Gibson of Versailles will be in lane one. Landon Arling of Marion Local in lane two. Owen Beechler of Bradford in lane three. Owen Rindler of Marion Local in lane four. Logan Phillips of West Liberty Salem in lane five. Colton Reese of Versailles in lane six. Dalen Garrett of Covington in lane seven. Bo Dwanger of Minster will be in lane eight. Your best time, Owen Rindler from Marion Local, the senior. 40.12. Uh, he looks to be challenged by Logan Phillips from West Liberty. Another senior at 487. And a day like this, partner, you can't count out Owen Beechler from uh, Bradford, 42.43. Beautiful day. Beechler might get it done. So this looks like everyone is just about ready to go. Getting into their blocks to get set here for our final hurdle event of the afternoon. It's so important that you navigate those hurdles correctly. We saw the last heat, young man who was leading it uh, the whole way, and then they got to the second to last uh, hurdle. It was a big of an obstacle for him, cost him to win. So all important to get those strides down correctly. It's just underway here. A good start. I believe that is Logan Phillips out of lane five. Get a closer look when they come around here. Yeah, look at Rindler from Marion Local just snapping it. Gonna be a two-man race from here. West, West Liberty. One more to go, neck and neck. And this is going to be a close one. They're both going to reach out at the line. We'll see how this plays out. Looks like Riddler is going to get it, 41.14. <laughs> They're going to have Reese of Versailles second with a 41.16. Phillips will end up third. And what a finish there. So our boys 300 hurdles in the books. We'll take a break while the hurdle crew works on the uh, hurdles off the track. Also have a uh, remake up a heat as well. So we'll take a break here. More track for you when we return on WOSN. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here at Minster. And again, today's track meet is presented by Reese Meyering and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. We also want to tell you that it's time to spring to life with the WOSN and TV44. Our annual spring funding campaign is underway now. Please partner with us by giving us a financial donation in any amount. Our campaign goal is $50,000 by Mother's Day. Donate online at WTLW.com slash donate. Partner, let's get back to the action on the track here. Up next is our girls' 800-meter run. What are we looking forward to in this one? Yeah, two fast uh, laps is what you're looking for. And the lady that runs the fastest uh, coming in, uh, Taylor Roth, uh, the senior from Minster, 2-1, 2.65. Nadia Ricker from Spencerville, the junior, looks to challenge her, 2 2 5 uh, uh, Ashley Yoder from West Liberty, the junior, uh, 225.85 should be a competitive race, but look for uh, Taylor Roth of Minster to lead the way. So just underway here in our girls 800. Have noticed so far the seed times. Some of these races haven't really meant a whole lot. It's some of the ones we expected to finish more towards the middle of the pack have jumped up and have gotten some solid finishes today. Well, on a day like today, there's prime conditions to set personal records and to conquer times that you didn't think you could be able to get. Beautiful, beautiful day. These are ideal conditions to make sure that you run your optimal best. Yeah, we're dealing with weather that you would see more the regional or perhaps state uh, finals today as opposed to, to what you get in the early to mid part of April. A nice move inside as everyone is going to head down to that bottom lane here is the first of two laps. Wrapping up here in our girls 800. Yeah, Taylor Roth came in with the, the best time, and you see why. Look at the lead that she has established early in this race on the final lap now, and she is extending it in a big way. A good battle for second. They're side by side there. Second place, West 
but uh, a lot of distance between them and the top runner. Yeah, really, if you think about it, this might be the most grueling of all the runs today. You, know, you have to sprint as fast as you can for two laps and maintain that. Talk about being in prime optimal condition. These young ladies right here, they're definitely in fantastic condition. And the uh, record uh, here at Minster set in 2021 by Taylor Spencer, Wingsfield Goshen, 217.19. Don't know if that's going to be challenged today. And Taylor Spencer running at the University of Marshall. And she's going to come just short. She'll be within about a second, second and a half of the record, but it'll be a solid win for Taylor Roth. Roth 218.50 will win. And you see exactly how grueling this race is. You got a lot of ladies just finish and collapse on the ground. Good job by the training staff getting over there and making sure they're okay. Set to go here with our boys 800 meter run. Miles, this one looks like it's going to be a fairly competitive race. And Quentin Rudolph from West Liberty, the sophomore. Best time at 203.15. Looks to be challenged by Patrick Hernhold of New Bremen, 204.25. Houston's Ethan Davis with a 205.10. He's a senior, so Keep an eye on him. Also, Andrew Pullman from Marion Local, the sophomore at 205.62. Those are your top four times in this. Now, there are other runners that are close. It's going to be a pretty tight eight-man field to start this out. Uh, everyone in their lanes right now, just waiting for the starters. Gun. And it looks like we are good to go with our boys 800. And we saw how grueling this run is. When the ladies participated in it, a lot of runners just collapsed afterwards. You gotta be in great condition. Real important throughout the day, you know, really maybe the first track meet you've had with this much sun that you've hydrated mm -hmm. and you've gotten out of the sun in between runs. So getting to the point of day to see who's taking care of their bodies might be a factor in this race. A pretty good lead on to the start here to this one. There is a big crowd, about third on back, although they are now moving up. Yeah, you get a better view here as they come through the cones. And have to go about three quarters of the way around. Now we'll see everyone begin to slide down. I believe that was uh, Quinn Rudolph. Uh, fell back, he had the early lead. I think he's set up in about third right now. Now waste no energy here. Last lap, whatever you have left, kick it in. And a big move being made on the outside. New new runner in third place now. I believe that's Jack Gray, Grace Hop now in uh, third place from Minster. See this field uh, try to tighten up a little bit. And Grace Hop, I believe, now moving into second place. Chasing Quentin Rudolph of West Liberty, I believe. See him come down to the line here. Partner, we're going to have another close one. Can he fend off? Kicked it in at the last second to get it done. A good, strong finish. So we'll wait for the rest of the runners to come in. It's the time. Pretty solid one. And it's going to be Rudolph they have in second place behind Davis. It's Ethan Davis of Houston that gets to win. And good sportsmanship right there. Both runners going, giving each other a high five. So Ethan Davis of Houston looks like we'll claim the win here. 202.56, I do believe is on the time so that will be our boys 800 we'll take a break it looks like we will have the girls 200 coming up next here on WOSN Up next 
Next here at the Minster Invitation, it looks like the girls 200. Give you the lane assignments here. It looks like Avery Hellman of Bradford will be in lane one. Sonny Voizard of uh, Fort Loramie in lane two. Caroline Wesner, Layman Catholic in lane three. Alexis Magoto of uh, Versailles in lane four. Kylie Williams of Minster in lane five. Adrian McKean of South Adams in lane six. Carrie Heckman of Minster in lane seven. Claire Oback of Spencerville will be in lane eight. Folks, you want to watch Magato and Williams in uh, four and five. Uh, their time so close. 26.54 and 26.58. Other than the 100 meter dash, this is probably the best race of your afternoon. This promises to be a fantastic effort by these ladies. So, might have had a small hiccup in the lineup, but it looks like everyone is now all set to go. Now they're set to go, and we are underway. A little bit of a slow start for Magato. Wasn't happy with the way she got out, but she is making up for it right now. Come on, Lexi. So looking for a good run on, here. And Williams trying to battle back in this. Magato's got it, but Williams closing. Like Magoto is going to end up getting the win. And Magoto didn't get a great start, but boy, she really made up for it when she made that second turn. Everyone's getting lined up now for the boys at 200 final. We see Carter Jones and Marion Local will be in lane one. John Keller of Minster in lane two. Will Holland Fort Loramie will be in lane three. Nate Busher, Marion Local in lane four. Jack Behan, West Liberty Salem in lane five. Anthony Pollock of Houston in lane six. Caden Franklin in lane Catholic lane seven. Jack Stamen of St. Henry in lane eight. Yeah, look at Busher. Had the best time, and you see why. He was shot out of a cannon. Winning this race easily so far. And continuing to pull away. No serious challengers. As Nate Busher in about 25 seconds is going to claim the win in our boys 200. We'll see if we can get the official time. A lot better than that. 22.95, nearly a second ahead of Jack Bayon of West Liberty Salem for the win. Absolute dominant performance. Elite level stuff out of Busher. Girls 3200 run our next event coming up here is uh, just underway. And again, I want to tell you that today's track meet is presented by Reese Meyering and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. So the girls uh, 32 just underway miles. What are we looking for in this one? Uh, Cheney Cedar Lee from Minster the Junior with the best time uh, coming in. 11 for 1.81. It is a long from Covington. Second best time, the sophomore. 11.46.07. And Anya Raka Rahami, I believe, the senior from Fort Wayne with 11, 5, 8, 9, 7, 18 ladies competing in this. And Randy, as we said earlier today, you know, one of these grueling races, eight laps. How did you prepare yourself? How did you hydrate? How did you rest in between events? All going to be a factor on who wins this one. I also want to correct the thing I said earlier. I said there was going to be a 3,200 run, 32 relay. Obviously, it's a 1,600 relay, four by four. I just can't do simple math. That would be an amazing relay, though, wouldn't it? You eight times, and then me eight times, and then you eight times, and then me eight times. this you're going to talk to so get some laps in here we'll get his mic turned on here I believe we're going to have a young man coming up to talk to us here we'll let you introduce yourself hey I'm Frank Graithman uh, I just ran the 400 and got first in it and uh, it was a pretty special race <laughs> and tell us a little bit about your day I know you just did a part of that but uh... yeah so I ran the 400 and then we ran the 4x2 placing fourth in that and 
It is a hot day, and that definitely is a factor in this. <laughs> that was one of the things that we had talked about. This is whether you might see uh, later in the season, but uh, for a, a mid-April event here, still kind of the early parts of the season, probably not used to uh, running in weather like this. Oh, no. It is definitely a lot colder and a lot more wind. This is uh, very humid, and it takes a little bit to get adjust to, I'll tell you that. But... Uh, I feel like everyone's doing pretty good. Everyone's staying healthy. Make sure they're stretched out and drinking a lot of water. Especially we're going to go back to the early part of next week and 40 again on Monday isn't going to help you out, is it? Oh, no. It's a high weather, so you can't really expect too much from it. <laughs> not very, not a lot of uh, steady uh, weather, to say the least. Well, Frank, you had a, a pretty good day, and what are you looking forward to for the rest of the year now? Well, um, honestly, everything's always pointed towards state, so you always prepare mentally and look at the competition from there. And every race you're going to be in, you got to make sure you push yourself, continue doing workouts, and hopefully get on the podium at state. That's always the main goal for everyone, and try to do the best they can. All right, well, Frank, hey, we appreciate the time, man. Thanks a lot. Oh, best yeah. of luck to you this Thank year. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Frank Wraith's been with us here as the girls... 32 continues on while we have a moment. We tell you there's a few more uh, field event finals we'd like to pass along. The men's or uh, boys' shop win. It's all the same. Uh, Dustin Quinter, St. Henry, the winner there, 54 4 and a quarter. Better than uh, Jack Kanabke of Marion Local, who was second, 50 feet 11 inches in the pole vault on the boys' side. Nate Busher of Marion Local, we've seen him run a few events here. This afternoon, won the pole vault 14-6, going a foot better than Luke Holdhouse of Fort Loramie, who finished second at 13-6. And in the discus, just wrapped up on the girls' side, Emily Earl of Houston, the winner there, with a throw of 111-5. Margaret McGlinch of Versailles, the runner-up, with a throw of 102-9. Uh, leading so far in the 3,200 is Borchers from Fort Laramie. The freshman who had herself a, a good early part of this meet, or this invitational, and she is showing out in a big way here in the 3200 as well. So while the girls continue on to the girls 32, we'll take a break and we'll have more when we return to Minster right after this. You're watching High School Track on WOSN. Beginning in what is our final lap now, the girls 32 miles. We've had practically one leader the entire way, and what a show put on this afternoon. Yeah, and your Ra Ram Rakahani, the senior from Fort Wayne, Canterbury, she is running herself one heck of a race. Looks like unless something catastrophic happens, she's going to win this thing, Randy. Yeah, this thing's been pretty much uh, thinned out. Again, as uh, Miles had mentioned, kind of a, a small run here. Had 18 on our heat sheet. I know there's a couple late scratches. At this one, pretty much single file. You can tell everyone kind of spread out all over the track. Not a lot of uh, challenging going on right now here. It's, uh, it's Camille Borchers in second, the freshman from Fort Laramie. But uh, this lead is going to be too big for Borchers to overtake. It looks like Borchers might uh, try to get in position for one big run as <laughs> Rock Marani looked behind her. Last 100 to see if there was a challenge. Here she comes down the front stretch. Good look at her right there. And this is going to be a solid effort. Just over 12 minutes to win the girls' 3,200-meter run. Yeah, right about to her average time of 11, 5, 8, 9, 7. With today's heat and conditions that they haven't run in, that's a great effort to, to get the victory. This looks like 12 minutes at .40 will be the time for our winner. 12 -0. trying to read that. 12.06.31 for Borchards in second. Maybe Miles can help with the eagle eyes. Yeah, Borchards 12.06.31, and Long is going to come in third place. Eliza Young, Long, the uh, sophomore from Covington, gets third place. So as they wrap up our girls 32, We'll have the boys 32 next. Time now for the boys 32 100 meter run here in our Minster Invitational. But uh, first, we want to uh, give a special thanks to all of our underwriting sponsors for today. 
Reese Myring and Company CPAs, Charles River, the Spencerville Athletic Boosters, St. Henry Bank, and Hulesman Automotive. Partner, what are we looking for here as the boys get set to go with our 3,200-meter run? Uh, Asher Long has your best time. He is a junior from Covington, 9-3, absolutely sizzling right there. Lanny Oakman from Spencerville, the senior, with a 9-4, uh, Owen Harrison, uh, 12, uh, a senior from uh, West Liberty with a 9-5, 5.57, 19 different runners scheduled to run in this. And... Uh, our last race, uh, we have to correct something. Uh, Cheney Cedarleaf was able to get third place up on the board. They put it on there real late uh, as we were going off the air. So congratulations to Cheney Cedarleaf grabbing third place. So boys, right now, uh, see if we can thin out this big pack in our opening lap. And Miles is giving some of the names to look out for here. Right now, pretty good battle up front. A special moment earlier today, too. They recognized Bill Young for his 30 years of service here for uh, Minster with their track program. Honored him with a plaque and great round of applause. Great job, uh, Bill, being recognized. Good job by the Minster community recognizing a man that spent 30 years with the program. Yeah, great job all around here. My first time down here at the Minster Invitational. Pretty good uh, time that we've had. Yeah, they've run this thing extremely well, haven't they? They have. You know, programs have won 14 state titles between the boys and girls. It's almost like they know what they're doing. They love track here, and rightfully so. Yeah, track and cross country, along with other sports, they're definitely big here. So our boys' fields beginning to thin out now. We see that uh, front two breakaway. Trying to get an uh, idea who's out in front of this one. While the guys continue to plow along in our boys' 3200, we'll take a break here and we'll see how this plays out on WOSN. Continuing on here in our boys' 3200, Asher Long Covington out to the early lead, but up with us in the booth, Colton Reese of Versailles had a pretty good day, some of his events. So, Colton, tell us a little bit about how your day went. Yeah, well, I started off the 110 hurdles, and I've always performed well at this meet. I told my coach, I'm breaking 15 today, running a 14-something, and it came what I expected. Didn't expect to run the same exact time back-to-back, -back, but I will gladly take a new PR. And the relays are a bit new. This year I've been kind of putting on a little bit of a workload between those. Really like them, and we've been working real hard at improving them. 300s, it was a new best time for me for this season. Um, after running three prior events, I was just telling myself to come out hard, finish the race the best I could, and although I didn't end up in first place, I'm still plenty of happy with how I performed in that race and pushed myself to compete. You tell us a little bit about uh, you know wrapping up with the 300 after you've had 110 some other relay events. Yeah, so the 300 is already such a tolling race. And with it coming up, I was thinking, all right, I got to give what else, whatever my body has left to push as hard as I can and compete. And although I was expecting big things, it was kind of unexpected to uh, be neck and neck with some rivals that I've had throughout the years. So uh, you, you talked about adding on to your, to your workload of some relays. What made you decide to want to wanna run some relays as well? Well, last year I ran the 4 by 2 pretty often. I actually ended up running it in postseason, so that was pretty used to that. But uh, the 4 by one something a little new. I kind of switched off between the 4 by 4 last year. I don't think I ran the 4 by one at all, but got put into the starting spot of that this year, and I've been performing really well, and I've been very happy with it, and it's become a very nice race for me. So what are you expecting uh, for the rest of the year now? I expect to do better, just improve any way I can. When we get to postseason, I got high hopes. Last year I didn't perform the best I could, but we moved down to Division Three, and with finally breaking 15 in the 110s, I'm expecting huge things for the postseason. Would you hope for weather like this? Oh, yes. Nothing beats weather where I'm not in a winter jacket <laughs> and trying to have hand warmer stuffed in my pockets. How, how often does that happen in the middle part of April? Oh, you don't get this a lot. No, it's actually kind of surprising. I don't think I've ever been to the Minster Invitational where we had really bad weather. But it's always been bad weather leading up to it. It's kind of like the turning point. And 
been a little surprised at the weather, the turnaround it's had since being freezing cold, but I will gladly welcome it. it. I, I hate to break you what's going to happen early next week, though. Yeah, I saw already. I'm preparing myself. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Reese Sales, the winner in the uh, 110 hurdles. You heard him. Some solid finishes. Thanks for coming up and taking a couple minutes, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So, Golden Reese, uh, your Gannick uh, winner in the one boys 110 hurdles here as we continue on our uh, 32, 3200 as they continue here. It's a nice young man. He's. Uh, I don't do enough for my track team coach. What more can I do? <laughs> Colton Reese, impressive dude, huh? Press a bucket hat as well. Miles no. trying to purchase off of him. Yeah, it was a camouflage bucket hat. Sweet look. Dude can run. Dude looks good. He's fantastic. Speaking of people that can run, as we turn back here to our boys, 32. About a lap and a half or so to go for our leaders. It's been a pretty impressive day. Can't say enough, too, about the officials here. Great job. I would get lost. The guy that flips the cards for three and two and one, I don't know how he keeps track. He's trying to get everything straight because he needs the gun for the last lap. So he's holding the gun, trying to take the hat off with the card on top of all of it. Yeah, he's putting those, uh, really call those, cover your ears, his earmuffs for when he shoots the gun. Mm-hmm. Waiting for our leaders to come around here for our final lap. Taking a look at our leaderboards, we may see who is being shown up front. Now they have Knox of West Liberty Salem out in front. Yeah, there's the last lap indicator. But they do have Asher Long was the first one, so they're having... I believe a little bit of an issue. Well, the problem with the scoring now is Asher Long beginning to lap people. He's now being shown at the back of the field according to the uh, the scoring system. Yeah, so I was going to say Asher Long. <laughs> we'll have to navigate that as well as we try to take a look. We do appreciate. How do you not see him? He's got the neon green shoes on, right? We do. We appreciate the uh, the video board with the uh, live scoring. But uh as, as Miles likes to tell all people, man, technology is great when it works. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, Asher Knox, though, from West Liberty, hanging out in second place, running a good race also. It's an Asher and Asher group, top two runners. But Asher Long, boy, this dude has been so impressive. The conditioning he's got to be in to run at this level. And this type of weather. Don't know if he's slowed down the entire day, but you see him again just working his way around some other runners. He's going to come across the finish line here in just a shave under 10 minutes. So good run out of Asher Long. Just take a look. Some of the records going back to the 3,200. <laughs> Asher Long just collapses on the infield. Just exhausted. And then Asher Knox drops to his knees. Those two guys gave about everything that they had. Yeah, record 938. They're not going to get that, but a good day out of Asher Long, Asher Knox. They're going to go 1 2. So Long's going to win, trying to read that 955 01, I believe. 959 34 for Knox for second. Looks like Wiederman of uh, New Bremen. Ends up third, but uh, well off the pace, 10 minutes, 19.75. So that is the boys' 3,200. We will take a break, and we'll come back to what will be our final events of the afternoon, the girls' and boys' 4x4 four four relays, when we return here on WOSN. Officials getting everyone set on the track, it looks like. Might be needing everyone to back up off the field. They're having some problems. It might be changing lanes. And they're having some issues. Oh, getting every, all the other runners to make sure they stay out of the way, I guess. Yeah, I see one of the officials going over to the fence line telling the other runners, make sure you're snug up against it.
So we will have the start coming here. Set, set. That's Crestview on the outside, off to a good start. Macy Kowicki, the senior, carrying it for them. Name we've said a couple of times throughout the day today. This one, uh, if nothing else, partner, a little battle of attrition. Who, uh, who's got what saved up here? Now, I don't know how these athletes have been able to save anything in today's weather. First time that they've been out in it. Already our third lead change of this first lap. Still three more laps to go, if I've done my math right. But as we've proven earlier, math not my strong suit. Well, I'm still waiting for that 3200 relay that you're advertising. That's going to be a fantastic race. That's what's being run right now. <laughs> four times four is 32, right? First exchange coming up, and it's going to be Minster carrying it in first place. And Versailles not too far behind. Maria Nykamp, the freshman, carrying it for Minster. Looks like we're going to be in the middle of another battle for the lead. Yeah, it's Versailles. Uh, Marion Garrett, Garrett in, uh, takes over first place for Versailles. So Versailles out to that lead now. Yeah, Versailles kind of hanging out in second place on the first lap. Overtakes now. Always interesting where track coaches put their runners. Do you want it to be the last kick or do you want to set a fast start? Fun part of the afternoon too when the athletes come to the edge of the track to cheer on the 4x4. Four four. Yeah, Maria Niekamp leading uh, Versailles so far. Looks like top two, both of the pretty good handoff as uh, they begin to pull away from the rest of the field here. Yeah, two-team race, it looks like. Versailles had a real clean exchange, but it looks like they're going to give up first place to Minster. Ava Stamen. Yeah, that's going to be neck and neck as they head down the back stretch. Yeah, such a fun race. You want to, if you're going to pass, you want to pass early. Trying to pass on the curve, so tough to do. See which one of these two teams set up better. This is going to come down. Yeah, just what we thought. It's going to come down to the anchor. Look at neck and neck mm -hmm. on the exchange. And Taylor Ross going to be carrying it for Minster. This one's going to come down to Minster versus Sales. Final handoff, clean one for both teams. Now, who can separate themselves from whom? This is going to be fun, this last lap. There's a little, little competition here down the back stretch. We'll see what happens. This one's going to come down to the final 200 meters. Now both runners, Randy, are expending all kinds of energy. Where are they getting it from? Running all day and then hitting the straightaway. Give it everything you've got, ladies. Yeah, you can hear the fans that have made it all the way through the day. This one's going to be a close finish. What a run. And our girls 4x4. Four Take a look at the official time when it pops up. What a race. Some of the runners just collapsing when they get to the line. Minster will get the win. I believe 408, 88, 409, 76 for Versailles. Fort Loramie third, 418, 95. What a battle between Versailles and Minster. It's a shame either one had to lose that one. Both teams, fantastic work.
And our final event of the afternoon is the boys 4x400 relay. Take a look at our lane assignments. We will see St. Henry in lane one, Houston in lane two, Minster will be in lane three, Marion Local in lane four, Fort Loramie will be in lane five, Versailles in lane six, West Liberty Salem in lane seven, and Crestview will be in lane eight. Yeah, Marion Local is your favorite, three, three, six point two seven. What a fantastic group of uh, Rindler, Pullman, Hess, and Schoen. Uh, Fort Laramie looks to contend at 33702. That's uh, uh, Ballas, Hoschler, Dress, and Rethman. Young man that you spent some time with, he's going to have the anchor today. Let's see how this uh, plays out here. As it looks like we're getting everyone lined up. So we want to tell you that WOSN and TV44 operate thanks to donations and sponsorships. Would you commit to a donation in any amount? It's a great way to show your support for this game, for your support of uh, local high school sports. Donate online at WTLW.com slash donate or just call the station 419-339-4444. Thank all of our sponsors, donators, for uh, helping us uh, not only today, but uh, all season long. Yeah, thank uh, Jacob and he did a great job uh, running up and down and Kelsey doing a great job sitting beside us on the top cam. Our camera people did a fantastic job today. Sure have. Speaking of fantastic, we're going to have fantastic close to our day here with the boys 4x4. Four fantastic 4x4. Four four. I like that. Not 32. Not 32, I understand. The 3200 relay was going to be a, a new idea by Randy Roberts. And that was quickly shot down. Crestview off to a good start outside. Kellen Putman carrying a baton for them. Able to use that uh, eighth lane starting spot. Also want to thank the Yellow Jackets that have been hovering around most of the day. but uh, They've been a friendly group of Yellow Jackets. They have been. And Crestview still maintaining that lead. Putman doing a great job. It looks like Versailles going to close and take over on the first exchange. See what happens. Uh, first exchange looked like a clean one for everybody. Now a little bit of speed being shown here. Keegan Gibson for Versailles carrying the baton and Andrew Pullman for Marion Local. And those two look like they're about neck and neck. I think Marion Local is going to edge ahead here. So we seem to have lost a couple of teams here in our race. Yeah, sometimes you decide, let's, let's go home. Marion Local doing a great job out front. Versailles in second. And it looks like, is that Minster I coming in third? Minster, yeah. See exchange number two uh, ready to uh, be made. Tate Hesse, a young man that we saw earlier today, just absolutely fly. And he has not landed yet. Stretching that lead for Marion Local. It's Marion Local, a little bit uh, of an advantage here, about halfway through. Boys four by four relay. Top two now pulled away. Thought this was going to be maybe a three team battle, but it looks like we're down to two between Marion Local and Minster. Minster trying to uh, cut that gap. Tate Hess, I'm sorry, that is uh, Hess of Marion Local. Lucas Thibodeau trying to close the gap here. Last handoff. Pretty good one for the top teams. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and what's showing? just took off. I guess he made the right selection on who to be the anchor. Showing, showing out in a big way. That anchor definitely not weighing anyone down. 
Good battle a little deeper in the pack. That is for third. There is good side-by-side -side battle. Up front, this is all Marion local right now. And Matthew Nightcamp trying to close it for Minster, but yeah, as you said correctly, partner, Marion local gonna win this running away. And there might be a new second place team when they get to the line. But Mary Local's going to have this one. Here's the battle right now, though. It is for second. This is going to be a good one, as it looks like it's going to be Mary Local Minster going 1-2. See who ends up. Is that St. Henry, it looks like, right now in third. Wait for the scoring loops to come around. Excuse me, Fort Loramie as uh, they will have the automatic scoring. So, Mary Local, your 4x4 winner. Looks like 332.65. And that is going to wrap up our action today. Anything else, partner? Now, what a great day. We saw a lot of runners that we're going to see run deep into the postseason. This was a fantastic day. Congratulations to the people of Mincer running a great meet. This was a lot of fun. Again, we want to thank all of our underwriting sponsors, Reese Meyering and Company CPAs, Charles River, Spencerville Athletic Boosters, St. Henry Bank, and Hulesman Automotive. So that's going to wrap up our coverage here from the Minster Invitational. So for my partner, Miles Holliday, and our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.